Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Hammered Corner. Today's video is the second episode of my Coin Collector Chronicles, talking to well-known collectors about their coins and their time collecting. So without further ado, here is the second episode with my good friend, Josh Catamol. Hi everyone, I'm Josh Catamol. I'm uh, 21 years old from Leicester and I'm a history collector but I do have a big passion for coins, certainly English ones, since I was about 15 years old and been collecting ever since. And you're, uh, you're at university at the moment, aren't you, doing history? Yeah, I'm studying uh, archaeology and ancient history. Well, as much as can be studied in a pandemic, it's all online, of course, but <laughs> we're all in the same boat, so just trying to enjoy what I can, mate. And at what point did you get into uh, history and coins and artifacts and things? I've always had a passion for history, which I think I got from my dad because he's a big history guy and it must have rubbed off on me and I've been doing archaeology in some way, shape or form since I was about eight years old and just always had a passion for it, collecting history and studying it, reading about it, all that sort of thing. And have you ever found anything cool? You done anything like that? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I haven't found any like gold or anything on, on these things, but to be honest, any history is cool, even if it's like... A scrap of pot it's still cool to think that like it's all these centuries old handled by people who are no longer here it's just fascinating it's like a real thrill and now it's sat on your shelf ready to be watched by everybody uh, uh who told you that <laughs> <laughs> okay so question uh how and when did you get into collecting well when i was about 15 i started branching into coins because my grandma a very long time ago she gave me a coin collection, which was, to be honest, mostly modern stuff, a few Roman, but there was one really nice Victoria coin in there. And it got me thinking like, that's pretty cool. And when I checked the prices of them, I thought, wow, it's really quite affordable. And then I had some crazy idea to see if I could get a coin of every English monarch stretching back to Athelstan, who was the first king of all England in uh, 927 or thereabouts. And so I just kept working my way back, getting the cheap stuff. And from when I was what, 15, 16, 17 to the present day, just trying to get as much as I can working my way back or anything that's interesting really. But hammered coins especially, they're so tangible, like the crude manufacturing and that you can look at it and think, oh, that was minted in the reign of some guy who reigned like 700 years ago yeah. or something like that. And like I said earlier, it's just the thrill of holding something like that and the ability of owning it, which is just fantastic. So from the very start, you kind of set yourself a goal of collecting one coin from 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 every monarch. So how how is that going so far? And uh, and uh, how and, and... I've got about I think I've got four left. Oh wow! And how long how long from how long ago was that? When when did you start? How how many years ago? I started when I was fifteen with like Victoria, Elizabeth II, Edward the Seventh, the common stuff, and then just working my way back from what I could afford and mostly buying well to be honest with the earlier rare stuff i had to buy fragments or damaged coins because i don't have like thousands of pounds mm -hmm. to spend on like pristine examples so i just collected what i could afford and i don't mind it if they're damaged it's still history and it's got a story to tell so exactly yeah it worked and do you think that you will eventually upgrade them or, or are you okay with the fragments that you've got so far well <laughs> Initially, I'd had like a timeline, like on my chest of drawers, I'd had like all labels and then one coin for each monarch. And initially there, I'd wanted to upgrade them, but now I don't have that timeline anymore. I just have the coins of the monarchs. So I may still have that fragment, but I might get somebody else of the same monarch. So I'm not necessarily upgrading. I'm just like expanding. Expanding, that makes sense. That's a good way to put yeah. it. And uh, what was the very first coin in your collection? Oh, I I, sh I should say hammered coin, yeah, English. I think this is the same story as a lot of people. Um, and Edward the first penny, Edward, one yeah. of well, pretty much the most common medieval English coin that you can get, like common Canterbury min late in the reign. But because I'd never had anything like that before, and because at the end of the day it's still like seven hundred years old, I was like, wow, mm -hmm. this is really crazy. And it was so cheap as well. Like I'd seen it on eBay and my brother said, oh, I'll buy it for your birthday, man. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so yeah, for £11, you could get something that's 700 years old in all right condition. 
it was just like crazy and it got me hooked into hammered coins like expanding into like the rarest stuff like that which is really quite fun and I think a lot of people's uh, own stories that they, they can uh, I think a lot of their first coins are Edward the first aren't they they're they're they're, they're I think we're going to see a lot of patterns and I think they're a great way to start aren't they they're a perfect way to start out because one thing that people worry about is like say getting a fake and they're like oh crap how do I but Edward the first they're so common they're so widespread mm -hmm. they're not really fakes because yeah. it's not worth it so it's an easy way to get a genuine example and get familiar with hammered coins. Definitely. And uh, who would you say that you're, is your favourite English monarch and why? It could be... That's a tough one. That's a tough one because I don't know. You could say who's the best monarch and who's like the most exciting. Like say a monarch like Henry VIII. Everyone knows that. His reign was very exciting. A lot happened. But in my opinion, uh, he wasn't the best king. Like in terms of best king, I think Henry the Seventh, because he kind of filled the idea like the ideal monarch. Like he asserted English power, he rebuilt the treasury, he stabilized the country after the Wars of the Roses, established a strong dynasty. Though otherwise, his reign was relatively uneventful. Though not in terms of coins, because obviously you had the first realistic coin portraits appear during his reign. But so um. Just to make it easier, who would you say that is your favourite monarch for coins? Who's your favourite coin era? What 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 king or queen? What who who's do you enjoy and what makes them uh, enjoyable to you? Do you think? I'll be honest, I've got a fondness for Richard the Third because I'm a Leicester guy. Obviously, he's buried <laughs> right up the road, yep. so it's quite special. And a mate of mine who's in archaeology, who was on the dig when they found him, so he's got that special connection to me. So. Whenever I can, I try and get coins of Richard III. And like, I can't afford them at face, well, at dealer value. So I just kind of find unidentified examples. But I'm not a dealer, so I don't, I don't, it's just so I can get them cheaply, you know. So trying to get as many different types as I can of Richard III, just because, I think because of the local connection, to be honest. It's sort of more meaningful to you because of that? Yes. And because he's rare too, it makes it oh, special. Right. Like, it makes it a challenge, exactly. you see? So, which, uh, you may have sold it, you may still have it, what has been your favourite coin of your collection? I still have it, and it is my favourite, well, to be honest, it's a tough one, like, I have so many favourites, but I think the one that ticks most of the boxes is my Ethelred Penny minted in Leicester, like, it's a... because the mint was right up the road, and because Leicester is a pretty rare mint, to be honest, it makes it all the more special. But also the coin has peck marks on it which were done by like viking traders when they were being paid like um what they call dane geld mm -hmm. where the english monarchy would pay off vikings so that they didn't raid so there's little um little marks done by the vikings to make sure that they're not being a uh, fleece with poor quality silver and also it's in like mint pretty much mint condition it's a beautiful coin which, yeah yeah it's it's crazy. Like, I'm not usually one for getting something in mint condition, but that one you might as well. I just couldn't pass it up. I just couldn't pass it up. Have you ever, um, have you ever tried to find out where the mint might be in Leicester? That it, yes. Do you know where? It... Yes. It's like usually people would think it would be like in the castle or like the most fortified area, but the evidence suggests it's in like a small parish to the north of the city, uh, across the river, outside of the city walls which uh, now it's just a, uh, it's an industrial estate. <laughs> I couldn't get close to the exact location because it was within like the church parish kind of their their area. So there's no place where it says, oh yeah, that's where it is exactly in this position. But I got close enough. So, and because there's not much, well, the Viking and Saxon periods in Leicester certainly aren't very well known at all because a lot of the archeology span is destroyed by the medieval stuff. So to get something right from that period and to have a named individual on it, namely the Munia, who was a guy called Thurulf, and you think that person lived here a thousand years ago, like that's history. That's and that's what makes it so fun. Definitely. You know? That's the best bit about this hobby, I think. Uh, so the next question is, uh, the rarest coin that you've ever had in your collection? <sighs> that one took quite a bit of thought, but 
literally the rarest one I have is one of two known examples with mine being the best. It's a Irish penny of Edward the Fourth, but it's also got a really interesting history in that around well in the late 1470s Ireland well it was hard to govern anyway by the English crown and it was often left yeah. to the Irish nobility to take care of things and um there was one particular guy I think his name was like Gerald Fitzgerald or something he was taking a lot of power he was almost like a king in all but name and Edward the fourth wanted to reassert control over Ireland so he sent a guy called Henry Gray who was a prominent noble over there to enter Dublin and re-establish like crown authority mm -hmm. but he was turned away at Dublin gates he couldn't get into the city and instead he went to the castle at Trim and set up a rival parliament and minted these coins to kind of pay the troops and like establish some sort of authority and it, around November 1479 I believe it was minted or or thereabouts and it's just amazing that not only have you got this fantastic story it's in good condition as well but so it's the second one in the world like so how how did how did you acquire such a coin was it expensive or was it just one of those coins that you t that are un unidentified and then you managed to find and definitely yeah it was what well, the thing is irish coins are quite characteristic in that they're very crude compared to the english issues usually because they had locally made dyes and didn't have access to like, the sort of craftsmanship you'd see in London. So I spotted that crude style and I looked on the back of the coin and could just about make out the mint name for this, the town of Trim. And then I compared examples and I found its, uh, its mate, which was the other known example. And I thought, wow, that's what it is. So bought it in a group lot. The others were a nice bonus, but I was primarily after that one. So. Nice. Did you have to record it or anything because it's only the second one or is that is that something you have to do or i uh, messaged the the guy called jasper burns who's a specialist on irish coinage from this period and um he said he confirmed what it was and it's a, a really nice example so at least he's aware of it though the photos i sent were the sellers pictures so to be honest i do at some point have to send them better quality ones but yeah, we'll see. Wow, that's, pre that's pretty fantastic to have something that rare in your collection for definite. And that kind of leads me on to the next one. So, that what is your most expensive coin? The most expensive English coin is my Charles II Guinea from 1666, the year of the Great Fire. Usually, I don't touch gold because it's it's so expensive, can run up into the thousands. Yeah. But I always wanted a guinea, and they don't come up very very well they don't come up too cheaply like the early stuff i was looking for like a stuart period one mm -hmm. and i saw that charles the first i was like oh that's fantastic and i saw 1666 my god like that's the year you want to get definitely great the great fire, fire. One of the yeah landmark moments in our country's history and it was 400 and i think it was 425 pounds which is a, a lot of money yeah. still it's always going to be a lot of money but for a guinea of that year yeah, it's got a bit of damage to it, but I think it was a great deal. And definitely, it's a it's a lovely a, coin. A gold guinea, like, <laughs> it was great. It's very heavy. Everyone loves a bit of gold, and gold is heavier. I mean, even even the same, and it just feels heavy, doesn't it? <laughs> it feels weird, like when you like hold a silver one, then you hold a gold, and you're oh my god, it's quite <laughs> quite chunky. That is. So, what advice would you give to any new person who is starting out on this lifetime hobby? I kind of touched upon it in an earlier question regarding the Edward pennies. I'd certainly start out with what well, some people say by the literature and yeah, a spink book is a very, very good and useful guide. But me personally, I always used online pictures like memorizing the pictures so you can get familiar with the different styles and help you with identification. But in terms of like actual experience, I would buy like a common hammered coin because that gets you like you get to feel what a hammered coin's like instead of just say looking at a picture or reading about what a hammered coin is like because when you hold it in your hand it's a literally first-hand experience and it all helps it's all part of the learning curve to get you more knowledgeable with hammered coins in general so and they're cheap like a tenner for a half decent edward the first penny it's not expensive at all like 
with this hobby, you don't need to spend hundreds of pounds to get a coin. They're so, they're, they can be so cheap. And once you've started familiarizing yourself with these coins, gaining more experience, then you become more confident and you can buy things that are more expensive or rarer or ones which are more likely to be faked. But I would always, always ask for advice from people if you're unsure, because so many people have been burnt and they've lost yeah. a lot of money. So certainly on the Facebook groups, I would recommend asking the experts like, oh, is this real? Is this fake? You're not bothering us. Like loads of people say to me, oh, sorry for bothering you, mate. Can you help me with this idea? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Like that's what it's all about. Experience, getting confidence yeah. to, to buy these things for yourself. So that's what I'd throw out there, mate. That's my advice. That's some good advice, mate. I, I, and I think is is people don't um, they don't think you're a burden or you're annoying them if you're asking if it's real or fake. I think they'd be more inclined to you asking before you buy rather than then you buying it and then having to return it and doing that, that kind if of thing. If you have any doubt, always ask before. Better safe than sorry. That's what I'd say. Well, lovely. Thank you so much for coming on, Josh. It's been lovely to hear about your, your experiences Absolutely. and your collection. Thanks for having me on. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Hey, take care, mate. Cheers. So there you have it. A brief window into Josh's collection and experiences whilst collecting. A huge thank you to Josh for being on the channel and for sharing his knowledge and wisdom with us all. Are you a coin collector and want to share your experiences collecting? Then please comment to arrange an interview for a future video. For any coin tickets or accessories, links to my Facebook page are in the description. Thank you all for watching and as always, keep collecting!